or snow budging because I don't know where I sent fire and something strike back. Amen. But I said today I will shake it off. Amen. On the altar of the Lord, I will shake it off. There's no way I can be on it. Hey! This song, and you say, What kind of song should we sing? Amen. Amen. Just dance the way you can dance when you have the tool. Because it's about the tool. Amen. It's not the way, but it's about the tool. Amen. 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 Thank you for the grace of David. Thank you for the anointing of God. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Father, for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. London people, are you ready to dance? We are praising God today. So don't let your seats disturb you. This whole place, we need to turn it upside down. We need to turn it upside down. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. Neighbor. As you see me so. As you see me so. I no get wahala. I no get wahala. Na only hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you sure? Tell your neighbor, say, as you see me so. I no get wahala. Truck up, take your truck up. Come on, come on. Sound. Take your truck up. As you see me so, as you see me so, I don't get for Hala. As you see me so, now only hallelujah. Well, as you see me so, I don't get for Are you sure? Now only hallelujah. As you see me so. Uh -huh. As you see me. Now only hallelujah. As you see me so. As you see me so. Now get one. Now only hallelujah. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Welcome Nicky Lawyer and Henry Soul on this stage. Oh yeah, Check. my people. My 
life. Uh, hey, give me life, save my whole life, don't get me. Give me the I'm not getting what to you. I'm not getting what to you. No food to eat. No food to wear. I can't pray to my God. Oh my God. He can't wear some my prayer. He can't wear some my life.
Washington, D.C., which was super, super helpful. We really needed to do what we needed to do. So I bless the Lord for her. Amen. And then, um, <laughs> this testimony, God did something very strange for me this morning at about, three, well, I woke up at three in the morning, and I was sharing my testimony with, with Reverend Paulette. So I was sleeping, and as I was sleeping, I had a dream. Um, I, two, I saw two men of God. The first one came, and he, he spoke to me, and then he said to me, come, let me pray for you. So he prayed for me. I cannot remember what he said. The one I remember is the next man of God who came. And it's, it's so funny because he was worshiping in my dream, just worshiping. I fell down, started getting delivered because I was manifesting in my dream. And I was on the floor. I remember at one point in my dream, I'm looking at his shoes and I'm thinking, hmm, so this man is just going to leave me lying down here on the floor like this. And he was ignoring me, completely continued with his worship, worship, worship. And then at the end, when he had finished his worship, then he sits down, he looks at me and he says to me, they had sent a spirit against you. It was a spirit of insanity. They wanted you to go crazy. But you will never see that spirit ever again. And this happened in my dream. And I was, you know, so when I woke up, because it's like when he said, you will never see that spirit again. That's the time I woke up. It was 3.17 in the morning, I remember. But I was shaking like this in me. And when I woke up, and I was just speaking in tongues as I woke up. So I want to give glory to God. Because God continues to surprise me. He, like what Reverend said, the enemy thinks you come this way. But God is like, listen, I made everything. So I know my strategy. Our father is an extraordinary strategist. Amen. He just decided this girl, when she's sleeping, someone is going to worship. We think that deliverance is all shouting and everything. I promise you, in my dream, this man was worshiping. I'm on the floor looking at his shoes and thinking, how can he just ignore me and leave me <laughs> lying on the floor? He just worshiped, worshiped, and then he finished. He looked at me. He's like, mm -hmm. they had sent the spirit of insanity. Like they wanted you to go crazy, but I want you to know you will never see that spirit again. And in the name of Jesus, I know my God not only did that for me, he broke that line in my family. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Um, hallelujah. Amen. My testimony also is just um, celebrating God because, oh, sorry. Um, it's on. This evening, I was heavy. I didn't want to come to church. I was just finding every excuse not to come. <laughs> and then the Lord was like, go there. They will be singing and dancing. And you join. And then what came in my mind is like in the, in the fellowship of where there is um, everybody of like-mindedness, there, you know, worship. So I came and it was just exactly what happened. But I just want to give God the glory because this morning I caught Reverend and I was about to, I wanted to cry. But the Holy Spirit was like, you, you said that this, this year, this, this season is a season of praising. Because I'm going through, I'm, I'm about to pass an exam in the spirit. And Yay. I see the devil is trying to bring me back, but he's not. Because I told you, I will not complain, but I will celebrate him through. Amen. So when I, I explained to Reverend, we pray, she prayed for me. As soon as we finished praying, but as soon as called me, he was like, what you doing? I said, um... I didn't know what to tell him. I said, okay, I just explained to him what I was passing through. He said, okay, when he goes to work, he will stop by. 
So he stopped by our house, which was just encouraging me in the Lord. We were reading the Bible and everything. And then um, he said, check your accounts. He had sent some money in my account because I've had ah. some rental issues. So he, we spoke and then he advised me how to talk to my landlord. And then the good thing also, whatever he said was aligned with what Reverend also had told me. Mm-hmm. So when I called my landlord, now he was like, that's fine. All you have to do is communicate. You know, just let me know what's going on. Whatever you have, give me little by little and we'll work it up together. Amen. So I just want to give God the glory for that. You know, I will not complain this year. There will be a year of thanksgiving. Amen. Mine is just for Thanksgiving as well. Um, we've been working on uh, several projects at work, and I'm just grateful to, to God for bringing everything together. And, um, you know, some of it I was like, because some things are new at work in the sense that we're doing a lot of things virtual, I wasn't sure how the review would go. I had a review earlier this morning, and I just thank God because the things that were on my heart that were of concern were nothing for my surprise. She was like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. So I'm just like, I'm like, wow, God just, um, I mean, she was, she was focusing on the things she was focusing on, but I was grateful because um, um, I just saw that that concern was completely wiped away. It was a, a financial, con- budgetary concern. Right? Amen. Uh, Amen. But he completely didn't, um, she didn't look at it, so I'm like, okay. And I said, you know, this is why I'm doing this. Could you justify? And she said, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. So I'm just grateful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. Shoes for her. I don't have shoes. Amen. You know, when the pretty Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, thank the Lord for different things. The first one is for the program we started of prayer at 11. It's such. It's something. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, I wanted to bless the Lord for you all also. Thanks, God. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. During this week, during this week, there was a night after the 11 p.m. prayer in my sleep, in my dreams, the Lord took me to show me some stuff that were happening. I recall actually, and I was really amazed, but what happened is that in the dream, he showed me people who spoke Takins, Ivory Coast, and who spoke Sufferance, and, and uh, they spoke war on Ivory Coast in the middle of the day, like they didn't hide themselves. And he called them the Balm, in English we say, Balm my Christians. Christians. Mm-hmm. So they are coming from Balm, but they are Christians. Mm-hmm. And when he woke me up, I just started to pray. And I went to see her and told her, okay, this is what I saw. And I went back to the room and the Lord told me, just do this. Make, just say it in the voice note and send it to, I sent it to the three person. And told me, let me take out the rest. So I believe God is doing something. Amen. Because, he's, he, because when he releases something, he's so sure that he's going to do something. Right. And he was saying that if young people pray, he can change the situation. Amen. That's why. I just sent it to like, two young people who told me to send to him. He's doing the rest. And I want to bless the Lord too because um, maybe I didn't look like it, but after I failed my exam, I was like, wow. So I really failed the exam. <laughs> and I was really touched because I really spent time studying and preparing it. And after that, and yesterday, I was praying with a friend. Like, we, we just had a prayer meeting on Wednesday. We, praying and my friend told me at a certain point we just stopped praying and the Lord told okay go to that me 28 verse 1 to 12. We started to read and my friend started just to just speak to me and as she was speaking to me I was feeling like I was understanding that since that time since I failed I was down I was like what what should I do now so I was so the Lord was telling me go this way and because I was, I was like, when I failed again, I was going another way. And 
it's insisted that I'm just understanding what's going on and I bless the Lord because I know after this understanding is continuing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, I have a testimony also. Amen. So I've been um, actually uh, I, I made 700 in credit score. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not no more struggle. Amen. So I thank God for that. And I know He will do for so many of you also. Amen. Because I say that we don't want to look, even if we are few, we don't want to be like people hanging around. Yeah. God needs to look at us and say, This is my glory to you. Hallelujah. So if you have any problem, you need to. Actually, I was thinking, I want the Lord to bless us with a new place because this place is, um, the lease is finishing on January or before January. I want all of you, if you find a good place, amen, that has room enough for us to be, where we can even have classroom, I can teach on that. I can teach on how to do also business, how to start to fix your credit, how to, you understand? Because I have my own experience and I know what it is. It takes discipline. It takes discipline and it takes you to understand. Because sometimes we think that the Christian path is just the spiritual. But we don't understand that actually a Christian who's born is spiritually established but financially established as well. Amen. Amen. Because Daniel was at the court of the king. He can see the king whenever he can. You understand? That means that he has means to see the king. You have to see all of them. Ezekiel was a cupbearer. That means he walked in the palace. So most of the people, they have to understand that. Even if I speak in tongues like an angel and everything, but I have to fix also the financial part so I look like the way I talk. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And it takes discipline. All it takes discipline. The Lord himself has to teach me. He said you cannot continue to run away. You have to sit down, face it, and say, hey, discipline yourself. Amen. So I thank God for the grace, because I don't say it was easy. It took me at least three years. Amen. And I'm continuing to fight to be at the top. Amen. 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 So today we will do a class on how to overcome spiritual attacks and the device of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Because it's very important to know how to overcome spiritual attacks. And they can come any time. Amen. Amen. I remember I prayed for so many people this week. I don't remember who I prayed for. But I know someone will call me, uh, Reverend, we have an appointment. Reverend, we have an appointment. I need to start writing them. Because I forget. In the middle of nowhere, they are doing my hair. I remember I have an appointment. And the person is waiting for me. You understand? So I have to write it down and yesterday out of nowhere i went to sleep after the prayer because the prayer was supposed to be taken by uh, my little twin sister here hey and she overslept <laughs> in jesus name so i found myself doing her 5 a.m amen you know i don't hide anything so when i did her 5 a.m i went to sleep uh -huh. and someone came to attack me i don't know why but that's okay so I start having fever. The whole day I have fever. So I start taking medicine. Medicine. And the whole day today I was sleeping. I was on my bed. But I knew it was the attack. It's like it pushed something, it put something inside me. And I have I pray, I pray against it. I break it. You understand? And then I asked the Lord, what should I teach on? And Michelle called me this morning. Thank God for her heart, amen. I just thought, what do you want to? I said, hey, where I am, I cannot even budge my finger. So she said, can I pray for you? And I said, please, amen. She prayed for me. And I went back to sleep, amen. And I started feeling okay, and I received the message of this. How to, of this evening, how to overcome spiritual attacks and the device of the enemy. Because they sometimes will surprise you. Even if we have the prophetic, we can see in the future, we can see everything. Sometimes attacks surprise us. We don't think about anything. 
Okay, you done your duty and to soldier, you go to sleep, they attack you. And whatever was put inside you, start uh, doing a curse, a cause, <laughs> a process right. in order to finish his mission. It's why they say no weapon form against me should not prosper because a weapon can prosper yeah. until it's striking them. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the joy of being together. We thank you for the grace of being together and to learn together. As you are stirring up our spirit, Father, let us have more of you, more revelation, so we can break the power of darkness. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. Thank you for the spirit of understanding. Thank you for the grace of knowledge. Thank you for your word that never fails. We thank you already, and we thank you for the people joining online. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So what is a spiritual attack? What is a spiritual attack? Now there's a big difference between a difficult day and spiritual attack. Because you can have a difficult day. That doesn't mean that it's a spiritual attack. It could be just that the day is difficult. Amen? Amen. So have you find, sometimes you can find yourself bombarded on all fronts. I mean multiple crises and your mind seems heavy, your body tired, your spirit dull. Those are kind of some sign of it. You want to pray or you try to pray, but it seems like your mouth is heavy with words. Okay? Spiritual attack is when fire are burning all around you, but you are not sure which one to put out first. You don't know if you have to start with this or you understand. So it's like fire is doing everywhere. That is spiritual attack. Okay? So it's, it start, uh, it seems hard also to believe that so many things will go wrong at the same time. A spiritual attack is a series of events coordinated by, coordinated by the demonic realm to oppress a believer, abort promise and shipwreck fate, stall out destiny. There's some spiritual attack that are so severe that some people can lose their life. There's some spiritual attack that can be severe in such a way that a man of God can preach. I've seen that. I've seen a man of God, and he was a man from Africa, and his story marked me. That man was going 110 miles for people. When people ask him for 100 miles, he will go 110. He will go and visit the sick. He will go and do all of this. But guess what? He was disconnected with the board of the church. So one day after service, they asked him, can you give us back the key? And these are the people he helped because he started with a church that has like five people over. But he lifts up the level of the church, get full and everything. But when he's doing all of that, the board was looking at him like, now it's getting interesting. You understand? So they removed him without him knowing. He was busy praying for the widow. Busy helping the orphan, busy when the other were busy thinking how we can remove this one. And that's what happened. The man, he never want to hold an assembly anymore. So he will go to houses to do church. But as soon as you are 10 and you say, Pastor, come and lead us, he will run away. That is an attack. That is an attack. Because I'm not even sure that the other one who did that stay together. Mm. But the enemy will orchestrate that just to abort the promise in your life or stall out your destiny. So we, we often live between two kingdoms. All of us know that the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Can you look for me? Philippians 3 20. We have God's kingdom filled with his purpose and destiny for of life. God, who is a loving Father, has a good plan for us. Philippians 3.20. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God in Philippians 3.20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our citizenship is in heaven. We live on earth and we are getting attacked on earth, but we know our citizenship is on heaven. Amen? So, 
be the kingdom of darkness. The devil who leads this world is, the, is a dethroned being who really has no authority in all life. But he wants to corrupt and destroy humanity. He continued to attack, he continued to lie, he continued to invade his intent of crushing God's purpose for life. And what happened? The devil sometimes, he will not come himself, you will not see him walking on the street with home. No. He will enter a weak person. He enter an attention. He enter an assembly and what he's doing. He's looking for the person who pray less. He's looking for the person who goes in. He's looking for someone who's weak. And through that person, he starts attacking. You understand? So don't think that sometimes it's far. It's why Jesus can turn to Peter and say, I rebuke you, Satan. Amen? So the reality is that all is happening in the invisible realm. Why is spiritual attack? Because it's invisible and it's happening around you. Amen. We may all move in the natural realm, but we are all citizens of the spiritual realm as well. And the greatest deception of the devil is bringing us conviction that he does not exist. There's a lot of church where the bell is a devil. Why? Because he doesn't want you to know that he is there. There's a lot of church where they don't pray the kind of sharing prayer you are praying. Why? Because they say don't provoke the devil and the devil will not provoke you. Mm -hmm. That's what. You provoke him or not, you are in his agenda if you are a Christian. Okay? So it's the first thing. He wants to block the discernment of people. He wants to block their weaponry and move under the cover of darkness. Mm. So sometimes when he starts walking, you don't even know. You just see someone, a child start acting up. Or you see a husband start acting up. Or you see something start acting up. Or a wife acting up. Why? He entered. Amen? And when you listen to many testimonies, you will hear some people that we tried to attack this man of God, but he was always singing, singing, singing. Then we knew the wife has anger. They enter through the wife or the child or someone else who's in the house, but his mind is idle. Okay? So we need to know how he operates. So do, you, do not ignore the enemy and think that warfare will cease. Don't do that. It is a mistake to follow your arms and think that things will get better without engaging the enemy. You have to engage the enemy. And when you engage, you have to fight until he back up. Amen? Do not ignore him. That is a wrong. It's what is killing a lot of church, even in America. They ignore the enemy and they keep growing and they keep growing. You will see a staff. I've seen that once in the church. The whole staff, everyone get cancer. Every two months, they are not this one, this one, this one. And they are not fighting. And there's no prayer meeting. There's nothing. They just think, oh, you are getting old. It's why. No. Where is it written? You understand? So you have to check the way it's attacking. And the way it's attacking, you start fighting. Amen? So we need to wake up a little bit. Amen? So when we are dealing with the power like we are doing that, casting out demons and all of this. People sometimes become nervous. The enemy will even invade with Christian and say that. Amen. We are called to be aggressive pursuer of the plan of God. We are aggressive pursuer of the plan of God. We need to be ready any time to engage in spiritual warfare. When we come as a group, we have warfare as a group and we have warfare as individuals. So both of them need to be engaged. Amen. We cannot do warfare as a group without ignoring the warfare that you are going through. Amen. We need to pray also for you and train you to pray in such a way that you can stand your ground. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let's go to the next. Amen. Let's read some of the greatest warrior. One of the greatest warrior who has a spiritual attack. 1 Samuel 30 from 1 to 8. 1 Samuel 30 from 1 to 8. Hallelujah. Amen. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked Ziklag 
and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was, burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Amen. Amen. So, hallelujah. Amen. Stay awake, Mama. Amen. David, where, where, where was David when it happened? I'm sure it was in another battle. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Brother Christian, I take you an example. You go and do the battle for the Lord. You come back home. Someone has disappeared. Did the Lord want him that when he will go? Amen. And that happens sometimes you don't know. It's not because you're a bad man of God. I, you understand? It can happen. Hallelujah. Amen. And when it happened, what, it ha what happened to them? They were. Mm -hmm. They are men of God, but they cry. Mm -hmm. So don't look at the men of God and you just want to see the glory image of the men of God always nice and everything has all victory. No. We can cry too. Amen? Amen. It can happen that you cry. Amen? Amen. But after he cried, the others start acting up. They want to stone him. You see how it brings division. Mm -hmm. Second attack and he waits. Now what will you do? Even the people you went to war with start attacking you, saying that, huh? It's because we follow you that they took our wife. Now you have to give us a wife. You understand? You see how warfare and war is step by step by step by step. When something happened to the group, the most vulnerable, they will start looking someone to point the finger. Mm -hmm. Before you know, you are like two can, three can, four can. By the time you know, that's it. That is the way the enemy attacked. But David, what he did, he stopped. He said, bring me an effort. Mm -hmm. Focus. He strengthened himself. It's very important. He didn't say, let the priest come and talk to me, or let the singer come and sing song to me so I can be. He strengthened himself. We need to learn that. Because sometimes when we are under attack, if someone is not, you will just say, hey, this is the, I was there for her. How she did not come for me? You understand? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, we have to understand the enemy has secretly executed the mission. It was a secret mission. Satan knew they would be far away from the family. Satan knew exactly how to attack and when to attack. You understand? So, the enemy sometimes hit home. That is where he hurt the most in order to discourage you completely. It will hit where you hurt, where you don't even know which thing is to start talking. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a man of God called Maurice Cerullo. I invite yeah, you, yeah. if you can read his book, read his book from his orphanage. He was an orphan, 11 years old. They were beating him like crazy in the Jewish orphanage. And one of the nurses who went to work there gave him a Bible. It's the way he gets saved. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit in that orphanage, speaking tongues by himself. He has the wonderful work of God. Amen? But his first son 
was a drug addict like no tomorrow. Mm. The first son, everything he tried, the guy was saving. He's the one who said, I will give one million soul to the Lord. And he gave. Mm. Day and night, the man was so powerful. When he arrived there, people are getting out of the wheelchair, running away. The hand grow. Mm. His first son in the house decided that he need a drug. He will smoke the thing, add cocaine and everything. Like he's looking for someone just to kill him. And guess what? Mommy Solo was saying, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. Because I don't know what to do with this one anymore. Three days before he passed the exam, one day he came and said, This time I change. I will not do it anymore. And he can preach, he can preach that song. So he said, I changed. Let me enter the school. And he was about to pass because he has university and training for everyone, evangelists and everything. He said, I will pass the exam and I will become pastor. Mm -hmm. Three days before, they found him an hotel, overdose, dead. Mm -hmm. Three days before he passed his exam, Jesus. the devil took him. Jesus. Maurice Serrano said, You gave it to me, I give it back to you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. There's men of God who have story where you just open your mouth, you close it again. Did he stop doing his work? No. All the way, he just died. 90 something. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So the devil will attack when you don't expect it. Sometimes he hit home, mm. unfortunately. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look. There's something about the word called Ziklag because they say they went to Ziklag. Amen. Ziklag means a place of pressure. Ziglar means distress. So there are crises that want to leave you dry and squeeze. Mm. The pressure will reveal what is inside you. Mm. Too many Christians cannot stand pressure. There are some people, as soon as pressure starts, they back up. That's it. They do not build up their spirit men and one attack and they go back to the world. I, I met a doctor in a water read and it was not a doctor it was a medical but they told me once he was a pastor mm -hmm. he was walking like a chimney as soon as you come you start talking about god he will carry everything he has and run away <laughs> but he was a man of god before you understand there's some people who go sometimes through warfare that they cannot pass that exam and they go back completely into God. You have never seen that? You sit at the bus somewhere, someone comes from nowhere, drinking his beer, and he's quoting Bible like no tomorrow. Yeah. You understand? Where he learned all of that? Warfare. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when the enemy goes after a church, he attacks the leadership. He will divide, he will use negative thought, Accusation and temptation to turn the sheep against the shepherd. It always happens. It's why unity is very important in the church. Unity is more than important. And a kingdom divided cannot stand. And I set up, I learned this rule being uh, young, assisting, I assist the pastor for four years. Even if my, my sometimes my decisions were different from his, because he was a little bit macho. You know the people who always think men are right. It was his will. You know, when you are, you, you grow up in a family where the father always has the say and the woman nothing, you will think like that, even if you are a pastor, you understand. So, but I never contradict him. If he's talking, he has the mic, whatever he says is what it is. Amen. I will sit down there, be quiet, wait until we are two. Then I tell him, hey, in this one, you are wrong. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I will never contradict him in front of people. Mm -hmm. Just because of Yerash. Mm -hmm. Just because of honor of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even if I have to close the door, yell at him or whatever, it happened when we are together. Amen. And we set up rule like, if he pray for anyone, I will not come and pray for the person again. I will ask the person, did he pray for you? 
Why did he ask you? What are the results of the prayer? You understand? I say, since pray for you is enough, I trust his anointing. Go. So nobody will feel like I'm more anointed. I'm more, I say, no, don't bring it here. People will try to go behind the back and everything. As soon as I found that he prayed for you, I say, it is enough. Trust and belief is the only way to have your miracle. You will not start like doing a special call for this one, a special call for this one, a special. That brings division. Amen. When you set up principle like that, people cannot disturb you. You understand? Because people, what they do, they manipulate. You might be manipulated like crazy. He will always try. If I can get Mama Paul anointing, and at the same time I'm calculating Vera anointing, at the same time if Justin can pray for me. You understand? That is a crook spirit. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the same anointing coming from up, all the way down. Amen. Amen. So when you stand by those principles, what happens? The Lord will know you also. Because you will know the anointing of someone, the Lord will know you also. As soon as you start doing, okay, let me pray more for you. Which prayer the older person did not do? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Another rule I have is, we are covering other men of God. We are covering like uh, the one in Germany. When I say cover, it's like big sister. That doesn't mean we are the one who created them. No, they have been there years before they met us. Amen. We are covering Monique in Cameroon, who is a pastoring with her. You understand? Yes. If someone called me from Germany or from Cameroon or from anywhere else and put the person in the call, Amen. someone called me from Germany, I will call the leader, do a three way. Do the deliverance when the leader is there. Amen. 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 It's very important. Because some people will go in the back, eh, reverent and everything, and this and this from Germany. Did your leader know that you are calling me? Mm. No hiding. Amen. Jesus lives in truth. Amen. I usually say it's only roaches who hide. Mm. When you shut the light, everybody's on. Amen. So we have to make sure that we are not roaches. Amen. Amen. We are in the light and we walk in the night. Amen. I'm not lying. Because it's roaches, they can kill like that. We are the ones stepping on the hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> be like, where she's going? Let's go. Amen. Amen. So know how to set an order. Amen. Amen. Same thing with family. When family is divided, it's a problem. It's a problem. The enemy will enter. You always establish communication. Even, and I'm, uh, I tell my husband that even if I don't agree with you, I will accept to stay quiet just because we are in front of the children. Yeah. When we enter, where we are to, Narinda, Narinda. It's you, that is you. It's when I'm telling you, my friend, this one, you are, you are wrong. Ah, you need to fix that one. I said because we were there, but this one, you need to, you understand? But in front of the children, hallelujah, Amen. because it's like that. If you don't do that, the enemy enter every time, because you know, hey, and children know that. They will always go to the one who can give them Amen. faithful. Amen. So it's very important to understand the way it goes. Amen. So David keys of victory. First, David turned to the Lord and began to praise and worship him first. Yes. If I may ask you today, what is the highest position in the spiritual realm? What is your highest position in the spiritual realm? At the feet of Jesus. At the feet, yes. It's a good answer. What is the highest position? His servant. Yes, his servant. Mm -hmm. In his presence. Oh, in his presence. Uh -huh. In his presence. Amen. So when crisis happen, first thing is you want to be in his presence Amen. to know what is going on. Amen. Amen. Because you went to handle the business for God. You come back home, someone has disappeared. Okay? So you want to know what God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. You know the story of the lady 
She's from Abidjan. If you have never heard that story, please, I push you to listen to that story. Her, nom, her name is Ellen. Uh, what was the second? Uh, uh, that, uh, the story was Something. She has, we can send it to you if you want. Mm -hmm. The lady went to evangelize in the village. In the middle of the thing, they are telling her that her husband died. In the middle of her son. Her son died in the middle of crusade. She did not stop him. She said, God did not tell me that he will take one of my sons. So let me finish what I have to do first. Because I came here for God. She finished talking like three days. Her son is in the mortuary. She go back home. She said, where is the son? They said they put him already in the mortuary. She went in the mortuary. She looked at the son. She says, hey, stand up. In the name of Jesus, the son wake up. He was there for three days. Amen. When they are going, you understand? I think her hand touched another body. Boom. Wow. The person wake up also. <laughs> and the person said, oh, who am I? And everything. She said, hey. If you let go, you don't belong here if you wake up. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, okay, can you drop me? I don't have any money on me. Can you drop me in the place where I am before we go home? You go home. He said, okay. They arrive at the place where the guy lives. They have his picture. They have tents. They were doing his funeral. As soon as they saw him, everybody run the way. You understand? So revival breakthrough there. Wow. They start the revival in Jesus' name. Amen. And then they arrive in the house. And she sat down with her son and she ate. Amen. She said, God did not tell me that he would take. And it happened to her husband too. You need to listen to this testimony. The woman has no womb. She was Muslim. She has no womb. And the doctor, the, the doctor said she cannot have a child. Her husband left her. He left, he went somewhere else. Jesus started appearing to her and she looked at Jesus like that. He has blood all over. She looked at him, she said, who beat you like that? Me, I'm here in my house by myself. I don't even have food. You come and you appear. I didn't beat you. Don't appear to me anymore. I don't want you. He said, no, will you accept me? And her name is a, is a Muslim name. And he said, no, from now on, your name is Elen. She said, who are you calling Elen? And my name is not Elen. He keep insisting. She said, okay, can you put the AC down? Daniel is cold. He said, okay, if you follow me, I will disappear. I will not come to you anymore. So she started looking for Jesus everywhere. Where is Jesus living? So she can tell, you understand? She went, she arrived somewhere, an evangelist in the market. She said, do you know where Jesus lives? The woman looked at her like that. She said, yes, and no. Come and follow. I will show you where Jesus is. <laughs> so she brought her in the house of her pastor. And the pastor, because it was so strange, the pastor said, yes, Jesus come here every Tuesday and every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So you come here every Tuesday and every Sunday you meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's the way she start coming to church. Because she said, but every day you tell me you will come. When I come here, you just sing the song, sing the song. So she start also singing the song. This woman didn't know the language. She didn't know how to speak French correctly. You understand? So she would sing just a song like that. Then she became a Christian. It's the way she gave her life to Christ. When she gave her life to Christ, guess what? The husband came back. He said, hey, how are you and everything? You, uh, he said, um, useless woman. He called her useless because she couldn't have a child. You useless woman. She said, oh, I have a good news for you because her heart was so pure. I have a good news for you. And he said, what good news? Oh, I just gave my life to Christ. I just met Jesus. He looked at her. He said, I knew you was foolish. Now I have a good reason for beating you again. So he gives one, one, one push. She said, hallelujah. One push, hallelujah. She can say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He keep beating her. Until he left her there on the floor. The number of hallelujah she said. You understand? The husband left and then he started coming every day. Every time she would try to pray, he beat her. You talk about attacks and spiritual warfare. Yeah. Jesus told her in secret, if you get pregnant now, tell him that if you get pregnant, he will believe, he will follow you. 
she went to tell him that. He told her, you are pregnant. So he went to tell her that. Uh, she went to tell him, my husband, I think I'm pregnant. And look at her, don't cry me. We have been in this marriage. Now yet she didn't give any child. Now you are telling me you are pregnant. She said, I think I'm pregnant. He said, okay, we'll go and verify. She said, will you believe my God if I say? He said, who told you you can even be pregnant? Let go. They went to the thing. If you listen to the story, look at the movie. Wow. They went to, the, the, to see the nurse and everything. And he told the nurse, this is my maid. He didn't say my, son, my wife. This is my maid. You know this maid. When they bring them from village, they start having children in all Abidjan and everything. Can you check if she's pregnant? So it's the way they took the wife, bring in, and found that she was like two months pregnant. So they came back and they told him, oh, your mate, you need to punish your mate well, well, because she's pregnant. He carried the woman, start dancing with the woman. They said, why you carry your mate? They said, yes, your mate. He said, oh, foolish woman. This is my wife. How you call her mate? But it was just, but you don't know how many children they have. And when they do the sonogram, they saw a hand carrying the baby. No woman. She has no uterus. A hand carried the baby. Do you know how many children they have? 16. Hallelujah. Amen. They have to cry to God to say stop. Amen. They told God we don't want it anymore. Amen. They have like one, two, and then start having twins. Amen. Three pet, twins, three pet. Amen. 16. Wow. <laughs> Amen. With no womb. Most of them are pastors now. Glory She's still living. She gave her testimony. Yeah. She said the problem with you Christian, you don't know who I, who is your God. Hallelujah. You don't revive wow. God. You talk to God anyway. Huh? Wow. He says it's your problem. Yeah. She did like four or five resurrection. Mm. She's still preaching now. You can see her on the internet talking That's simple. Right. Ellen, I think it's I will find it and I will send it to you. Amen. So the key of victory. In the presence of God. Okay. Be in the presence of God. No matter what. No, be funny. Don't worry. Never lose your worship. Amen. There's a dimension of praise that we tear down the wall of darkness. Amen. Magnify the Lord with your mouth and give voice to your for uh, to your gratitude for who he is and what he has done in your life hallelujah. the main key is to enter the presence of god and press him hallelujah uh -huh. now pray in the french for you because it's in french okay you can pray in the french and send it to Josephine. she don't have 27 minutes left amen amen and i think it's there's one good subtitle in english amen. two uh-huh david so sought look for if you want for god direction yes he looked for god direction he didn't stop there mm -hmm. bring me the effort mm -hmm. when you are under attack what is the direction to take david encouraged himself do not always wait at orders to encourage you speak to your heart speak to your mind prophesy on yourself talk to yourself amen mm -hmm. silence your emotion and listen to direction Silence your emotion and listen to direction. David received a word of the Lord and a directive from God. Amen? It is an example that there is a promise for every spiritual battle. It's very important. For every spiritual battle you are going through, there's a promise. There's a way at a certain point where you need to trust God for your finances. Because you remember in the Bible, they don't go through different game, name. So some battle is just for you to discover God under that name. Amen. You can discover him like a healer. Like here, I'm standing here. In the morning, I have fever. You Amen. understand? But now God said, okay, she knows me already like a healer. Let me see if she can stand the battle for this. And it's that battle that will help you discover him under that name also. And step by step, you discover him through different attributes. Amen? Amen? So it's very important. David received a word and directive from God. I said that already. So if David has stopped and started arguing with his general, who have been dead, mm -hmm. 
because they were more than him. They want to stone him. If he say, hi, come, blah, 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 and start arguing, that's it. The enemy will just look and say, I have victory. Okay? So there's uh, nothing you can sort out in strife. It's very important. There is nothing you can sort out in strife. You are in any spiritual battle. As soon as people start arguing, the law is not there anymore. The law is not there anymore. It's better sometimes to stay quiet and back up and ask God, what should I do? If you enter into a exchange of word, the enemy will use those words after to fight you. You are the one who said it. So I want to carry it. Okay? Amen. When God spoke, David arose and obeyed. It's good when you listen to, to obey. Because you can listen to God and you decide not to obey. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can listen to God's advice or someone coming from God and you decide not to obey. You carry the, the agenda your own way. You understand? So obedience is better than sacrifice. Listen and obey God's direction to have victory. Do not be stubborn and do it your own way. You may live to regret. You may live to regret it. Okay? okay. So Now, let's go through some different types of attacks and study them. Can you look 2 Timothy 1.6? Amplify, if you can read Amplify. Mm -hmm. The first one is the lack of spiritual passion. First attack, lack of spiritual passion. Second uh-huh. Sure. Two, one to sixteen. One to six, please. Second Timothy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Second Timothy two, one to six. Mm -hmm. Amplified classic edition says, So you, my son, be strong, strengthened inwardly in the grace and spiritual blessing that is to be found only in Christ Jesus. And the instructions which you have heard from me, along with many witnesses, transmit and entrust as a deposit to reliable and faithful men who will be competent and qualified to teach others also. Take with me your share of the hardships and suffering which you are called to endure as a good first-class soldier of Christ Jesus. Is it Second Timothy 1? No. Verse 6. Sorry, 1 verse 6. And can you do uh, Amplify Classic? Yes. Okay. So, Second Timothy 1. 1 verse 6 only. Amen. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. That is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. Amen. Amen. It says stir up, rekindle, stir up. There's a fire as soon as you lose it, you start backsliding. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very important. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a personal fire that fuel spiritual progress. That fire intensifies when the furnace of prayer is tended regularly. If you stay without reading the Bible, without praying, without, 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 at the end of the day, you die. Even if you are a man of God. Even if you are a man of God. So it's very important to understand. Because sometimes there's two roles, and it's very important as leaders that you understand also. When you, you preach to order, and when you minister to God yourself, when you preach to order, you sometimes prepare a prayer, prepare this, prepare this, but sometimes you say to others and almost 10% enter inside you because you are saying to others, it's easy to say to others what to do it. Uh -huh. Sometimes you yourself, you need, God will check and say, uh -huh. how about you? Amen? And you have people going like that, they become like sitters because they, it's drying, drying. They keep giving, they keep giving. They forget themselves to refresh. Mm. Amen? Amen? So we need a personal fire to recounter the personal fire by stirring up 
Amen. Amen. So as a follower of Christ, you are the priest of your personal life. Amen. You are the priest of your personal life. If you find yourself dry, when is the last time you go to the fountain? When is the last time you went to drink? Amen? Amen. And when you drink, I'm sure God say, hey, fix this. Correct that. You understand? Because it's very important. It's very important because you don't want to grow safe people who enter paradise and you yourself, you come and you are stuck at the door. Mm. Hallelujah. It's very important. Amen. We are personal priests of our own life. Amen. For that, you need to do some firing prayers and cast out discouragement. When the fire so the discouragement will decrease and the fire increase. The symptoms of that, and can you find in Amplified Joshua 1 8? So, lack of spiritual passion, symptom of that heaviness, discouragement, busyness, amen, not business, busyness. You are always doing things, deep doing, and you forget your personal time. Lack of new revelation also. So, how to solve that? Joshua 1 8 amplify. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Amen. So if you are sometime like you are preparing wash and everything, you need a message for order but you need a message for yourself too. So you need to ask God, okay, how about myself? What should I eat? This is for others. They have different situations, but you yourself, you need food too. Amen? So you need to stand and let the Holy Spirit minister to you also. Amen? So someone kind of attack, extreme frustration. Extreme frustration. This is a feeling of anger and annoyance caused by being unable to do something. The enemy will hit with different ways. This feeling don't come like that. No. It can start even in your childhood. As you grow as a woman or as a man, you grow frustration. And then it becomes so much inside you. That way, that is overwhelming and it's a way, it's a strategy for Satan. Okay? So, emotion in this attack are not spiritual leadings. You cannot base yourself, your reaction on your emotion. They will destroy you. They will destroy you. Amen? It's very important. Extreme frustration. So, the Holy Spirit differs from your emotion. I know you know that. Do not confuse both. Spiritual, spirit leadings do not deal with natural realm. Your emotion in the contrary, contrary can switch. That is why it is imperative to learn how to control them. It's very important to control the emotion. It's the number one killer of a ministry. Hallelujah. A pastor who don't know how to control his emotion, a, a wife of a pastor who don't know how to control her emotion, has assumption, he will destroy the ministry. Amen. Can you read Ephesians 4, 20 to 24? And uh, Grace, you look for James 3, 14 to 16. Ephesians 4, 20 to 24. Amen. Ephesians 4, 20 to 24. Mm -hmm. But you did not so learn Christ. Assuming that you have already heard him and been taught by him, as all truth is in Jesus, embodied and personified in him, strip yourselves of your former nature, put off and discard your old unrenewed self, mm -hmm. which characterized your previous manner of life mm -hmm. and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires that spring from delusion, mm -hmm. and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new nature, the regenerate self, mm -hmm. created in God's image, God-like, in true righteousness 
and holiness. Amen. You have to strip before you read. You have to strip yourself from the old and put the regenerate. If you are stuck in the process, you will kill your ministry. If you are stuck in the process, you will kill your Christian life. I explain. You, let's say you was dealing with anger before. You were someone with good anger before. The Lord delivered you. The Lord healed you. You have to regenerate yourself in such a way that your reaction will not be anger anymore. Amen. That means you work on your own character. That is true fasting. That is true the word of God. That is true a whole word of transformation of man. So when I come, I step on your feet, your first reaction is not the, the fist. You understand? So this has to be going on in another, in another, in the way that your new nature come. Come first. It's very important. Because if you are delivered, but you keep entertaining the old nature. You understand? You may miss paradise. It's very important. It's very important. It's where you see a lot of people stuck because they don't understand that there's a difference. You cannot entertain. Don't play with Satan. He will eat you up. Amen? You need to decide this one and let go. This one I let go. And you walk, how you walk on your character. Do the contrary of what that spirit eats. If you are angry, when the person angry, if the person angry makes you mad, give him double of the way I I'm telling you. I take the example of my mother in law. Oh, the woman can disturb you. She will manipulate the whole house. Before I come, the whole house is in fire. She says she's a slave to her son. I, your wife takes me like a slave. She asked me to wash my teeth. I usually wash the teeth in my house. So it's, when I open the door, it's what receives me. <laughs> what do you think? Because you are in the body. Yeah, we were from the village. But I'm telling you, I look. <laughs> if you enter into that, there will be a divorce for sure. You understand? But the Lord said, I want to teach you how to break the power of darkness. Where hate should be, give love. Amen. Give love. Give until you embarrass the person. The person doesn't know what to do with you now. You understand? We have to train ourselves of doing good when they expect bad from us. It's the only thing that makes a difference. Hallelujah. The woman is there now. She cannot talk. If you say Paulette, she say hey, this one. Why? I embarrass her. Amen. I came to Yaoundé, filled the house with all kind of food. I put it there. I say, I just pay your diary. I think we are fine now. <laughs> she look at me. She say, you say what? I say, I pay your diary. Amen. To say that hey, no more wahala between us. We are fine. She just laughed. She said, oh, I have food up to December. I say, thank God. Amen. Amen. You have to know how to react. Normal reaction will be anger. Normal reaction will be fight. Normal reaction, you know. But you know how to. It's very important. When I say how is Michelle, I don't want Michelle to say how she is. I want Grace to say, oh, I'm telling you, this is a beautiful gift. You understand? People won't need to tell you, tell the way you are. It's not you yourself. It's the people you are living with. Amen. We need to tell. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? You can call my husband, he will tell you that woman is for her, for sure, but I'm telling you. <laughs> she's a gift. Amen. Oh, amen? amen? So it's very important. Why? Because the way you react, the way you treat the order is what people keep. And this is the difference with religion. Religion is the rule. Oh, I did this. And you did not do that. And they, you understand? Christ is love. I hope I'm not losing you. No. Christ is love. Amen. Love will not be without demonstration. Amen. If you have a husband, Vera, you never tell your husband, I love you. I'm sorry. 
One day we just packed his skin. A woman like that. She never told me I love me. And you will say, but I, feel, I put you up. He said, hey, did you say I love you? You understand? It's very important to show demonstration of what you do or what you think. And demonstration is action. Hallelujah. Next time you put me in the women conference, amen. Amen. I think they will fire me. Hmm? They will fire me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So extreme frustration. We need to slam the door to the enemy and open the door for breakthrough. Amen. Slam the door to the enemy. Amen. Open the door for breakthrough. You cannot have the both door open and think things will be fine. Mm. You cannot have, you say, okay, I want peace now, but at the same time you are doing strife. No. Amen? Amen. You are called to manifest the kingdom of God and live by the power of love. Can you look for 1 John 4.18? 1 John 4.18. Do you want to read James? Oh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. It was 14 to 16. So James 3, 14 to 16, it reads, But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Mm -hmm. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exists, Confusion and every evil thing are there. It's very important. So in your James 3, 14 through 16. Repeat it again. It says, but if you have bitter envy mm -hmm. and self-seeking in your heart. Self-seeking. Mm -hmm. Do not boast mm -hmm. and lie against the truth. Mm -hmm. This wisdom does not descend from above, mm -hmm. but it is earthly sensual, demonic. Mm -hmm. For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. Amen. It's very important. James 3, 14 through 16. Can you read now First John 4, 18? First John 4, 18. First John 4, 18, Amplified. There is no fear in love. Mm -hmm. Dread does not exist. Mm -hmm. But full grown, complete, perfect love mm -hmm. turns fear out of doors mm -hmm. and expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, okay. is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. Mm -hmm. You cannot have fear. And love in the same house, or we love, or we are fearful. You choose, amen. amen. If you say I love, that means you will not be afraid, amen. amen. It's a choice, it's a choice, it's very important. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. So you can choose to love someone despite mm. you are not receiving the same love. You can choose to love and let God fill the gap. It's very important. The person does not love you at the level you are expecting the person to love you. Okay? You inquire of God. Is it for me or is it not for me? For me? The Lord said, it's your portion. Mm. Amen? So now you set your expectation at the level God loves you mm. on the person. Amen? Amen. What happened? The love you are sowing will start working for your harvest. Amen. The person you want it or not will end up giving you back everything you have sown in his life. Mm. He wants it or not. It's a law in the Bible. Amen. It is a law in the Bible. The Lord showed me once, he said, why you worry? I am the one holding the heart of the person. Mm. So I am the one who knows how to put things together. Mm. Love the person at my level of love. How the love love? The Lord love passionately. Amen. I don't know if the Lord loves you a little bit. Like, I love you. I love you. No, love you. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's passion. Hallelujah. Amen. Not small passion. Yes. So. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So you love the person passionately. The person is there complaining, groaning, and everything, being angry and everything. But you say, don't worry. I'm the best one. At least I have husbands. Some people I don't have husbands. Bring your feet here. Let me massage. No, don't, don't, don't bother me and everything. In the beginning, it's don't bother me. Then you say, yeah, yeah, massage, massage, even the small food. <laughs> and massage. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like that in start to then he said, Oh, I have some tea also in my back here. But I know you don't know how. He said, No, let me learn, let me learn. And he start punching the back and everything. You know, you can walk on the back of someone too in order to do the massage and everything. So you do all of this, and the person look at you like this woman, I don't know what to do with you. Little by little, you are piling up, you are sowing. Because you sow, and the law of the Lord is what you sow is what you reap. Yes. Amen. It is coming. Wait just a time. The person will be running, bringing you tea. I say, you want with one sugar or two sugar? Or you want with a cream or you want? He said, no, I don't want. I don't feel like sugar. I think I will take coffee. I don't even think. I think there's ice cream. Go and check if there's ice cream. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's what you sow. It's what is coming back to you. But when you were sowing, you were crying. You was crying because you say, what did I do to God to give me that pain? Amen? But the Lord worked it out. Amen. The Lord worked it out. When you do something, don't forget. Because when I do something, I do for God because I know I'm lending to God. He said, love the one people don't love. Love the one who don't love you. <laughs> because when I will be claiming to God, I say, I have done this. Amen. He will bring it back to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you have heard me. Amen. Amen. Third attack is confusion. Confusion about purpose. The enemy will launch confusion in order to move you out of divine purpose. Every life has a declared destiny. Say amen. 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 Through prayer, we discover or why and plan or how. Through prayer, you discover what? Your why. Why, why brother Christian, you are brother Christian. Why mama po, you are mama po. Why you are Michelle. And now that God tell you your why, you are here, he will tell you also your how. That is your purpose. Amen. If you are here, you say, I don't know my purpose, you can meet me at the gate. Because I know, I'm sure you know your purpose. Hallelujah. And now in your purpose, as soon as you target and focus on your, I know my why, now I will do my how. Amen. This is when it start operating in gift. This is when it start operating in anointing. This is when you understand because you are focused. The first is my why. Vera come to God and say why. Amen. And it's a summary of who you have been from your past to now. He said he tell you why. Now what you need to know is my how do I become what you say I am. Amen. This is where he pour his anointing. This is where he, he pour his favor. This is where he pour his gift. So as you are operating in the gift, you become your how. Hallelujah. Amen. You get it. Amen. Amen. So the late Miles Monroe usually say, purpose is the master of motivation and the mother of commitment. Is the master of motivation. So each one of us here need to know the why. Why God has called you. You need to know. Each one of you following, you need to know why God has called you. That is number one. And then you have to establish the how you become who God has called you. Amen? It's very important. Each person's destiny is crafted along with the personality you will have he will give you give you a personality that fit the how he will give you preference that fit the how he will give you gift to match that fit 
the hand. Even the husband is giving you, it's because of your character. He will give you everything depending on your card. You understand? And sometimes, when walking, hallelujah, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> when walking in your marriage, hallelujah, it's where you build your character stronger to do your harm. Amen? In order to achieve the purpose he has to do for you. So when you look at your husband like that, know that it's the one God has given you to do your purpose. <laughs> so be happy. <laughs> Look where she landed. Oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Be happy. Amen. Amen. Because they can give you another one. You say, hey, please come and take. Amen. <laughs> it's very important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You do not have to change everything about you in order to live out your purpose. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people think when I join Christianity, I need to change everything. You don't change everything. God will use what is in your life, mm -hmm. the way you are. Because when I look at myself, I know it's perhaps the accent. Even my accent did not change you. Amen. The way I'm stubborn in something is the way the Lord has put his ministry. He sent me where there's nothing, and he's telling me, this is where you start. I look left, I look right, I don't know where to start. And he said, this is where. And you start that digging. You dig, you take someone, you brush him a little bit. You start working with him. The person says, hey, I cannot do that. I say, you can. Just look. Just imagine you are doing, you are doing your way. Amen. <laughs> this is the way. Hallelujah. Amen. It's because of the character you have is why you are not. Amen. It's because the character of Mamaji, the way she is, is the way God has given her. When she's speaking and she's doing all of this, if you watch Kathleen Kuhlman, the way the woman was theatrical, you will think that she's doing a movie. And she will talk the Holy Spirit and stuff. You wonder, is she doing That is Mamaji number two. He will not change anything. Hallelujah. He chose you with the same character, uh, baby Joseph. The same character you have. Amen. It's the way he chose you, and he's in that character. He used your gift. Amen. Amen. How the enemy attack you in this confusion? First, mental attacks. The enemy treats thought and perspective in order to bring confusion. He can come. You think a certain way, he twist it uh -huh. and bring you in another dimension, but it's not where God sent you. Second, pressure is a tactic of the enemy. He gives wrong motive. Don't sleep in front of me in Jesus' name. You know better. Amen. Or we change chair. We give you the chair without caution so you can stay away. <laughs> Amen. So wrong motive push you into a level of pressure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We can see Adam and Eve. The enemy will come. Who? Why? Why you don't want to eat? And he, he keeps saying, show you the good thing. By the time you enter there, you're in trouble. The fourth attack is the lack of peace. Hmm. Lack of peace. The kingdom of God is filled with peace. Amen. One of the ways we can discern the presence of God is by having a deep inward peace. In Isaiah 9, 6, a song was given to us. And at the end of it, they say, the Prince of Peace. Amen. His name is the Prince of Peace. How you know you are doing something with God? When you are doing, you are not shaking. You are not trembling. You don't wonder who will knock at the door next and everything. You understand? Amen. Why? He's the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, can you start looking for Philippians 4? Six to seven. God does not move in tension. God does not move in strife. God does not move in division. God does not move in torment. We were delivered from the grip of hell. The enemy create tension. The enemy create drama. The enemy create confusion. Amen. And Grace, look for Romans 8 to 7, please. Go ahead. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. To 7. 
Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, mm -hmm. but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, which is definite request, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God, and God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So peace comes also with contentment. Mm -hmm. And contentment is something you need to practice. Mm -hmm. That means some people choose never to be content. Mm -hmm. You know, something great brings is a satisfaction. Mm -hmm. They give you one million, you want two million. They give you two million, you want five million and everything. You will not be at peace. Because as soon as you have the money, now you start controlling everybody. Why is she talking to me? It's two years she has not called me. I'm sure she wants money. Barbara, and you have no peace. You have to understand that. The peace of God comes with his blessing. Amen. When he bless you, you have peace as well. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Romans 8, 37. Mm -hmm. It says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We are more than conquerors. Amen. So, why the enemy attack your peace? Who can say why the enemy attack the peace? Why it will attack you? Attack especially your peace. Why? Without peace, you cannot pray. That is true. Look at uh, like when you was anxious, like before you pray with Reverend D and Solomon came. All of this was what your emotion, your panic. Why, why, why? You cannot be at peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it also opens the door for fear mm -hmm. because, and fear actually is one that then opens the door for other really terrible things. So, mm -hmm. it, to me, it's like. Um, the attack on peace is laying the foundation for actually worse things to actually enter in by means mm -hmm. of fear. Because the minute of anxiety is messing around with your mind, you start imagining scenarios that are not there. The minute your imagination is engaged, you start being scared. The minute you open the door for fear, then every other terrible spirit comes in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about he says when he said my peace I give you mm -hmm. because everybody has something troubling them mm -hmm. and that peace if, if you don't have the peace you can't give it to someone you can't have the confidence and faith in mm -hmm. Christ to mm -hmm. to um, cast out the devil or because you're not assured that you you, you can mm -hmm. but when you have the peace you're like no my peace is coming from God so mm -hmm. it gives you the confidence and the faith to execute everything amen mm -hmm. so the peace and you read Philippians no oh, Romans 8 37 yeah. you read Romans 8 37 uh -huh. so you have to understand also that to reconcile to God is to restore harmony amen, amen. when someone say I am, I have God in me. You need to see harmony in the life of the person. Amen. You need to see friendship in the life of the person. Amen. Because to reconcile means to bring into agreement. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. So if you come to me and you say, I have the peace of God, and I hear you swearing, cursing, and all of this, I'm so, you don't have the peace. There's something else inside you. And I don't want to be part of it. Amen. Amen. So it's very important to have the peace of God. So lack of peace throw you into a cycle of emotion and make you do bad choice. It will push you to move outside of your assigned place. Okay? So, so far, the attack. First one, lack of spiritual passion. Mm -hmm. Second one, we say extreme frustration. Mm -hmm. Third one, confusion about purpose. Mm -hmm. The fourth one, the lack of peace. Mm -hmm. We are going to the fifth one. Fifth one, unusually sluggish and tired. You wake up, you are tired. You don't understand where you went or something. You just feel tired. It could be that the person also pushes his body uh, too far. It could be that also. Amen. 
But on the case of the attack, it's a demon making the person always tired. Amen. This is what happened to Elijah. If you can read First King 19, 1 to 5, you know that thing where Elijah went uh, confront the Baal prophet and then suddenly he felt tired and has to run away. Can you read? First Kings 19, 1 to 5. Mm -hmm. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done mm -hmm. and how he had slain all the prophets of Baal with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then he was afraid and arose and went for his life and came to be a Sheba of Judah over 80 miles and out of Jezebel's realm, and he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a lone broom or juniper tree and asked that he might die. He said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. You said up to? Five. Five. Verse five. As he lay asleep under the broom or juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Amen. Amen. So what Jezebel did, I'm up for you before. What Jezebel did, she used what they call a word curse. Ah. Someone can send a word curse and the curse that acting. It's like something they sent to you and the thing go after you and you start being tired. You start being like beating up just because someone has pronounced something bad on you. You understand? She sent a word curse, a release of a demonic proclamation intended to establish negative and evil forces. The word go after you. Words are key that open door to the spiritual realm. Word curse release an atmosphere. Amen. So many believers are fighting breakthrough that belong to them already. It's very important. It's because they are living in the toxic atmosphere. You have to make sure that as you are fighting a battle, clear the atmosphere. Mm. Even at home, clear the atmosphere. Amen? So when you are fighting, when anything happens, when you finish fixing it with the person, clear the atmosphere. That whatever was released is cleansed with the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That no resistance, because the spirit can go but be whole free. Mm. Hallelujah. That's different from canceling a curse. You can cancel a curse, but clear the atmosphere because the person who spoke released a certain atmosphere. Mm. You follow? Mm -hmm. Amen. Clear the atmosphere. You know, every house has an atmosphere. Mm. Amen. Every house has an atmosphere. You can enter a house, you find peace. You can enter a house, you feel uneasy. You can, you understand? So you have to be able to change the atmosphere in your house by releasing blessing in the atmosphere. Release, release. Because sometimes you stop at binding. You bind, but you don't release anything. It's why they say to strong men, you find your house clean. Everything is clean, but what was there after? Nothing. The enemy will do everything to enter. You get me? Release the atmosphere you want to live in. Release the presence of God again. Amen? Because whatever happened there polluted the atmosphere of the house. Important. Hallelujah. Amen. So you can read Romans 4, 17. You must clear the atmosphere as well as breaking the word curse. Romans 4, 17. Amplify. Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, mm -hmm. who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Amen. 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 We go to number six now. Strong urge to quit. There's a Lord who just told me something, and I want to release it before I forget. Mm -hmm. He said, when you are angry, an example, in your house, please, I want you a feedback from you. We are teaching, and you know we are all learning. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching to myself. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I may be looking at you, but I'm talking to myself at the same time. Amen? 
He said, when you are angry in your house, how long stay the angry? How many days? One voice. Flash it out. Before the sun goes down. Amen. All of you. I want the truthful. Honestly, yeah. How many? She said two days. How many days? Even on the phone, it's not only one week. One week. Ah, no, tell the truth, Brother Christian. How many days? Two. Days. Two. Two. Mm-hmm. It depends what it is. Sometimes nothing. Sometimes one. And then sometimes. Oh. It's what? How long? Yeah. Me, I have to repent before I go to sleep. But... No, I'm just asking. Mm-hmm. How long? Not long. For me, even before the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Okay. It just, I feel like it sits heavily on me. So. I will try by all means. It must finish, and tomorrow is another day for other things. Hey, let me ask you. I didn't finish my question. No, it's the same. It's in that day. Uh-huh. If you repent, you um, forgive, you bless you, and you wake up and then it, you did not do correctly, or you still mm-hmm. have something in there. If you wake up. And so and you continue. Then me, you did. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Anyone yeah. who do pass the night has seen. Depending on the situation. Doesn't care of the situation. You have seen. That's why I'm saying. That's why you repent in the morning. You repent at night. I was teaching and he told me, ask them. You just repent. Anyone who pass the night, Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Ah. You need to settle in your heart to agree to disagree <laughs> and to accept that the law reign in your house. Hallelujah. When you pass the night, you took the things in your own hands. Mm. There's no more day. There's mm. no more day. And you are open. Amen. You are open for more attacks. You get me? Because you just took it from his hand and say, I will settle it in my own way. Hallelujah. It's very important. You want the cover of God, you have to walk according to the way of God. As soon as you take and you say we finish this discussion tomorrow, you are already your own judge. Amen. And the way you judge is the same measure that we take to judge on your next problem. Amen. Blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Here is not in my classroom. He's the one teaching. Amen. <laughs> he said, Tell them. Because you can be working hard in other area of your life, but expecting a certain harvest. And then the harvest comes short. And you don't know where you reduce your harvest. Mm. It could be because of that problem. You cut short your own thing. You understand? The Lord will move the measure he's giving to you of grace. Just because you have carry over on your own head and he look at you, he say, look. So, we are still talking. So, when you forgive, the danger we have, and we talk and you to you, feel, so the you danger know. we have in the as a Christian, and I know that because I've, I've suffered of that, is what we call self righteousness. Uh-huh. Thinking that because we think a way, we need to be justified in a way, way. and it become God's way. Uh-huh. That is the danger yeah. we have. Yeah. Yeah. We have to understand That's that true. God has seen it all what you did, what the person did. Yeah. God saw everything, is recorded. You understand? So now, when the person comes and break the rule, you are the one who carry. You say, Father, I forgive you. And I let the person go. And in your action, they need to see that you have forgiven the person. Because the repentance has fruit. That's true. You understand? So you will not tell your husband, I forgive you in your heart, and you don't say it in your mouth, and you keep acting like anyway. Mm-hmm. You did not forgive. We need to see action after you have forgiven. That show that you have forgiven the person. Amen? 
If not, you are taking the matter in your own hand. You are on your own church, and the measure you are using for that person is the same measure they will use for you. Amen. I can stop here. Amen. So six is my last page. Amen. Strong urge to quit. To quit your assignment. That is an attack. Negative experience lead to the building of emotional wall. Amen. It's very important. The mind go into defense mode to protect from ongoing pain. Amen. Amen. Keep the things keep happening to you. So what you do, you start setting your mind on defense. Amen. Amen. Even if things change, because you are on defense, you don't see the change. You don't see the change. Mm. You're busy seeing the normal. You, uh, because you think the bad thing will happen. The bad thing will happen. The bad thing will happen. It's very important. Amen? Amen. This wall will not allow healthy relationship to be built. Nobody can build a healthy relationship because you are on defense. Thinking that the bad thing will happen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is on unhealthy way of thinking, is a traumatized mind. Mm. It is a toxic place where many conflicts will not be resolved. It's very important. Don't abandon your assignment because as soon as more will happen, you will just quit. Don't abandon your assignment. The enemy wants you to forfeit your destiny. You must be established in God's will for all for your life. Amen. 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 It's very important. Some men of God have abandoned and made a battle. Can you read Proverbs 1 from 1 to 7? Proverbs 1 from 1 to 7. Amen. Proverbs 1, 1 to 7. The Proverbs or truths obscurely obscured. Okay, maybe let me read more from there. Mm -hmm. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, mm -hmm. justice, judgment, and equity, mm -hmm. to give prudence to the simple, to the young men knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. Amen. Amen. Wisdom is very important. All of what we are saying is just wisdom. Amen. You cannot defend yourself until that is God defending you. You cannot. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mama Paul, you follow me? You cannot defend yourself and think that God is, for, is the one defending you. So this war of protecting yourself or doing like that, it could be demonic. Because you build them up yourself. I stay away in such a way that no pain will enter again. Can you protect yourself? No. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to put your guard down so the Lord heal you truly so you can progress amen? amen so how do you stop a storm that come and want you to quit you comment it you don't negotiate with it you command the storm to stop amen? amen i remember the last time i don't know when was it like one week ago or something like that my son my son, older son and my husband start arguing out of nowhere. <laughs> Early in the morning when I'm ready to type my class, I look at him. I did maturity in it in my heart. And I stayed quiet. But it disturbed me because it was out of nowhere. So after I went to, to rest, I, I always inquired the Lord what just happened. Anything happened in my house, I asked him, what is going on? Tell me what is going on. I want to know. That is the wisdom he was reading. You need to know what God is doing. Brother Krishna, you follow me? Yes, you need to know what God is doing. So I asked him, what is going on? Is there something I need to be concerned? 
He said, look, is the enemy just tempting you to see if you will get angry? Do you understand? So I finished binding the spirit. I cast out and release peace. The same night they were talking like nothing happened. So before you react, okay, think, don't do war because what wall are doing, things are not changing. You have set up already a guard saying that this is the way I live and I will not change. No, everybody progress. The Christian you was yesterday is different from the Christian you are today. Every one of us progress. So for you to progress, you have to let wisdom change something inside you. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's finish. The last uh, attack is drawn back toward all bondage. John 8, 36 says, If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. Amen. So the enemy hates our freedom and will find a way to ensnare us again. He will look for a crack in your character, in your behavior to come back. Amen. An example, you have been delivered from wrath, I talk about it, and anger. You live free for a while, and then you fall back into a silent anger. Before, when you get angry, you was bah, 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 and they think it's a third word in your, amen. One word, three, amen. But now they have delivered you, they pray, people, 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 and everything. You learn to master that. Amen? Amen? But you decide that, Jose, you decide that now, smooth, smooth, I will be what they call in Cameroon, sumare. sumare. So uh, I get angry, but I don't show it. Yes. I just yes. enter the house, do my own thing. When they say, good morning, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> you know that one kid? That one came more than the one where you explode. Because when you explode, at least we know. <laughs> but a lot of Christians do that too. And we stay quiet. You don't hear them. So you don't know if they are angry. They are not angry. They are some manipulating you that way by the silence. That is the moment. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to stop it. Amen. You need to stop it. This is more destructive than the other one. You need to know your weakness. Each one of us, we need to know our weakness. Look for Ephesians 4, 17 to 18. It's the last scripture. You need to know your weakness and resist it. I know my weakness. My weakness was anger. I am fighting it like crazy. I am fighting. As soon as it go up, I go to fast. Oh, I will fast until I don't see it anymore. Amen. I will fast, trust me. Because I said, no, Satan, you will not have even an inch of me. <laughs> Amen. Know your weakness. If your weakness, your weakness is pride, be ready every time. Even you see a child, you do like that. That pride will leave. Be ready always to recognize even the small person. Give him the, 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 the first okay. place. You yourself you go in the back you will see that devil running away from you. Whatever weakness you have, fight it yourself. Amen. Amen. Read Ephesians and then we are done. Ephesians 4, 17 to 18. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to walk in light. Hallelujah. It's why we are learning all of this. How attacks come. It's why we are learning how to avoid them. It's why we are learning how to master our character. It's very important. They can come when we are not expecting. We never say that when you join the, the church, you become like an angel. Living on the on the on the uh -huh, in a in a la la land. No, you go to shoppers or you go somewhere. Someone will cut you. Someone will curse you. Come, you understand? But now it takes a renewed mind to answer the person. Amen. Is there any question? Yes, ma'am. 
So I'd like to understand this, that if you're confronted with a situation, mm -hmm. um, and please hear me out. Mm -hmm. You, let's say you're battling, um, it's a spiritual attack. Uh -huh. You can feel that it's a spiritual attack. Uh -huh. Does it make sense to just concentrate more on God and not really confront what is happening and tell yourself that if you concentrate on God, this thing will go away? Or do you make it go away? Like you speak to it and be like, you better be getting out of here. Am I making sense? That sometimes you're in a situation and then you're just like, I'm going to keep my eyes on God. Does it make sense to do that or are you to uh, have a two-pronged approach? You concentrate on God, but you also turn around and tell that thing. You answer your own question. You command the storm. You don't wait until the teeth disappear. It will not disappear. Okay. You will so not disappear. you can still be oppressed even when your focus is, is on God because you haven't uh, basically gone to war with the thing that's affecting you. You have to engage the enemy. Okay. All of us, you don't wait. Is why we have this lesson. So we get prepared. So our spirit men know how to react. Mm -hmm. So when the things happen, you are already ready. You understand? To confront the situation. You know what word to use. You know what to release in the atmosphere. You know how to bind the thing. You don't just say, okay, God, we make mm -mm. Mm -mm. Confront it. Yes, mommy. But I think also when you you are facing an attack, God will give you a strategy. Like what he will tell you, because she's asking that you have to concentrate on, on God and then bind the thing. Because sometimes before you confront the thing, God wants you to repress some stuff on, in your life. I know that when I was going through an attack, the Lord said that retreat, rebuild the altar. Just as he told the prophet um, mm -hmm. Elijah, before he cut down the fire, mm -hmm. because something will attack you, and you just want to go ahead and attack the thing without, because I feel like if you are in the presence of God constantly, mm -hmm. he will give you the strategy mm -hmm. for that attack. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't show up the same way all the time. He mm -hmm. will give you, as long as you remain in the presence of God, mm -hmm. he will give you, if you don't leave, because when something attacks you, the enemy, when you are under attack, the enemy wants you to retreat and totally leave the presence of God. Mm -hmm. But once you stay in that presence of God and refuse to leave, he will give you the strategy to overcome that. But you answer your own question also, Mami. I tell you what, it's what I'm teaching all of this morning. The presence of God, if you know how to walk on it, he will never leave you, not even a second. So when anything happens, you can retreat in your heart two minutes, just in your silence and ask him what is going on. Mm. And he tell you, and you come back, and you speak. Even if you have to do warfare and start binding and casting and everything, you don't do it in front of the person. You make sure the law gives you the last word to finish here. And then when you go in your night, you kneel down, you understand? But in every day you walk there, he walked with me, he talked with me, and everything is every minute. You understand? You cannot say that you will prepare yourself. It's only when you sleep that the Lord will speak to you. No. So let me go and sleep, then I'll come and answer you tomorrow. No. We have to force ourselves. It's why we are taking the whole month of September to have a continuous and abiding presence of God. Amen. That is the only way to face what is going on outside now. It's the only way. The war for now, the war for now is digital. Satan does not use like a EA. Now it's high level of information in two minutes. So you cannot be like a archaic, uh, how you say, soldier. When someone is using a treaty or I don't know, another, you understand? Yeah, prepare yourself for high level, amen. So you are not surprised, amen. Mm -hmm. But did you get it? Yeah, okay. Uh, Vera, yes, mm -hmm. when you said that, um, that when you that when you have a word that do not give it, when you when God gives a word, you're giving it out to people, mm -hmm. do not also forget to to ask for yourself as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Can you also be the same tool? 
like what you're giving out is also what you're get, yeah, it's taking at the same time too it's true but it's not true okay since we have started five years of ministry there's some work we have taught like 10 times some like once sometimes we have new regulation you understand so when i come in front of like the people i have on saturday i ask them okay father what is it i will hear very small i want you to speak about that and sometimes you give me case i come here on thursday he will tell me teach on this uh, mama pauline will be there teach on this i want to say something to my son teach on you understand so he will tell me what to teach because he wants to address other people. And when I'm talking, it's only you. I don't even know who I'm addressing. But it's only you who know that hmm, she just spoke about you. Anger. Uh -huh. <laughs> you understand? But he's the one. So he building the class in order to fix the life of so many. Mm -hmm. But me, I can be going through something different. Sadness. Uh -huh. I have a situation back home where my mom, she's, she's here, but she's going through a mental state where we don't know if it's Alzheimer or, you understand? So my brother, all panic, huh? what will we do? And everything, we have to deal with that. I have to go some, uh, sometime in Cameroon and I have to do it. So I'm dealing with different things that sometimes I'm preaching to people. So I need also my time where are we asked to know what are you speaking? What are you saying? What are the new directions? Like this morning I told you, I have a revelation. I was carrying Stephen, the son of um, uh, Ezekiel. Stephen started prophesying to me. He was on the road. The Lord was giving me the next direction in the next six months through the mouth of a baby. You understand? But what I teach to order is totally different. But what I need to be minister on is totally different. It's why I say, even if you are in place of leadership, take the time to lean of God and eat food from him. Because at a certain point, you are feeling tired. You have given that much, but you have not received enough. There's some person who do depression. It's not to discourage you. You know that? There's some who kill themselves. They have given all they have. But who has drink? Who has um, replenished? Yeah, who? Because when people meet you, they know how to ask for prayer. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I have a question about that. I, mm. I, I know it happens, but the question I have is when you sow what you reap, what you sow. I mean, when the Lord replenish them because they're. He's, he's, they're they're we they're allowing themselves to be poured out you have to allow yourself also because pride can make you think that the law has my back amen you have to be open also that and you have to be aware because some people will preach 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 but they never take time to stop and let god give them you you understand yeah, like also sometimes my sister will come and with food from uh, Africa. Oh, it's just for you. You understand? We like also that love, that care. You understand? Don't think that is only for the members and teams. Everyone needs love. Amen. Amen. So there's a way for you also to be ministered to as a man of God. The Lord can talk to you or through the mouth of someone that minister to you. Uh-huh. You don't know, maybe he's asked when he will bring you something. But because I'm just saying, you don't have to ask him. He will replenish you in different ways because he meets your need. Can I? Because Go ahead. Need. I, I actually think that, sorry to say this, the answer mm -hmm. is to spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because that's the, I, I, that's the, Yes, that's why she's saying that sometimes some people are so busy giving mm -hmm. that they ignore that very important aspect yes. of getting from the Lord because your food is specifically for you between you and your father mm -hmm. outside of every other thing that people will do. You can be so busy ministering to other people. Five o'clock in the morning, I remember Brother Christian was he's always telling me that 
his phone is constantly ringing. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not that he's not in service, he's really serving other people. And it's very easy to get caught up in that. Mm -hmm. But if you do not then turn up and like, no, between five and eight, mm -hmm. no matter what is happening, mm -hmm. that is my time with the Lord. And that's then your time to be replenished by the Lord. Mm -hmm. But some people don't do that. And I guess that's why she went that mm -hmm. you end up committing suicide because you fear empty. If you, if you fear. Yeah, it's the empty that you that right. we're not doing. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. We finish. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. No more question. Okay, let's stand up if you can put it. I want us to pray on all of these. Amen. Yeah. That the lessons stay with us, that we grow in it, that we receive more wisdom, that whatever attack you might be go through, that you will pass, that the Lord will turn everything bad into good, Amen. that you learn from it. Amen. We are learning. It's also possible to have more than one type, one type of attack at the same time. Yeah. Sometimes it's financial, but the time so strong, everything at the same time. Yeah. Indifferent. Leave me my 
I will bless the people of man. Put my Sami Oposo again, at least to finish. As you see me so, as you see me so, I not get one halal. Now only hallelujah. Are you sure? Tell your neighbor, say, as you see me so, I don't care for a hala. Can you take the truck up? Take the truck up. Uh -huh.